When I got the chance to open Scully Restaurant, I had no idea, no concept of what I really want to achieve. I always felt as a chef that I learn as I go. Build the ultimate pantry, and the pantry will build your food, your dishes, your ideas. Every couple of months, I'm always creating something that I know that is in my kitchen, ready to go for next year's dish. So I'm always a dish ahead. I'm one of the lucky chefs out there to have a restaurant that I can do what I do best. Come in, guys. This is my my little uh, prep slash dungeon kitchen that we have here. So we use this as more of a, like a, my little playground, to be honest. We have our main fridges. This is our meat fridge. Beautiful stuffed chicken wings there. Um, you can see here we have some rice cookers. I normally will ferment the root vegetables in the rice cookers. Right now we have a little disaster here. We have a Jerusalem artichoke because uh, it creates all the gas. This is the, the finished product of the Jerusalem artichokes. You can see it's like this natural skin that's gone this pure blackness. Basically like ripe banana, like super ripe fudgy Jerusalem artichoke to be honest. This kind of techniques, what, what I say is like building your pantry. This is not for this week, I can tell you that. This artichokes is gonna be folly for Christmas time. Get it when in season, do what you need to do to create it and then in time, your dish will come. So I go home better in knowing that I have this amazing stuff in my kitchen. Pantry is getting ready to build for new dishes. I've been really intrigued about garums. So what I know garum is, uh, is uh, basically the old ancient Roman Empire way. When back in those days to, to season their food, they made uh, fish sauce or fish essence. They had a lot of sprats, sardines. So when they used all the meat, they had all these bones. They, they crushed it up. Uh, mix it a little bit of Greek oregano and salt. In time, I think it took like a good six months to a year and then every couple of days it stirred it, you know, and it created the fish sauce. And when I bought the bottle, I felt it was a bit like very salty, but unbalanced and refined. I thought, what the heck is this stuff? You know, like, I think we can make our own stuff. So I used a thing called a rice koji. Um, this is basically the heart and soul of making soya sauce, miso, sake, and uh, we basically used that salt and water and the protein is the, the smoked fish heads. We put it on our incubator uh, on 55 degrees and it creates this like rich, creamy kind of fish sauce that you can actually just use a little bit in sauces or seasoning your, your vegetables or, or fish, or whatever. To be honest, once you learn the time management on it, it's pretty straightforward because once you start, you're always a year on top. But after this, come over here. This is a cheese rind garun. So it's basically cheese essence. A couple of months ago, I had an omelet dish served with telegio cheese sauce. So we kept all the cheese rind of the telegio. Instead of throwing it in a bin, we dehydrated it. And you get these barks of this dry skin of the tele uh, telegio. It's super umami and like, like strong ass. So I took this, crushed that with the koji, salt and water and created cheese garum and I have to say it's basically a cheese soy sauce but there's no soya bean it's gluten free and it a little bit can go a long way so one of the things is like yeah it sounds like like a lot of work a lot of time but look if you like good wine and good whiskey the time creates that finesse in your palate that that smoothness and even as a chef is the pride that you're actually having this pure liquidified umami in your kitchen that you can just put anything in your sauces and you go, wow, it's amazing. I've done something simple for the restaurant um, just as a side dish uh, right now in season. It's the beautiful pink fur lady potatoes. We blanch them and then fry them. So simple technique, burn the butter. You burn the saturated fats that get to that nice nutty flavor to the butter. And you don't need salt because you're gonna use the garum as your salt. Split it with the garum with the cheese. And it just, just gave it this nice, like this eatable palette to it and give it a little bit of color and flavor, a bit of chopped chives. Like that. That's it guys, plain and simple. Cheese garum on nice bun butter with some nice potatoes. Like I said, this is more of like a, a side dish. So I just think it pairs nice with, uh, with a piece of meat or uh, some, some nice like salmon or fish. Mm. Oh, that's it. But the garum just gives that, that, that coolness of like having a cheese soya sauce. And I think it's really nice.
give me time, knock on my door, come and see me soon. You never know what I'm going to create with this cheese guy room. It's still a growing thing for me. I'm learning as I, as I go. And like I said, different rinds give different flavours. So we'll, we'll go day by day with it.